Welcome back. Today I tackled J.M. Truth and his lesson on gas pressure. But first, the top comment from the last video. And it reads, shame on you. I used to think he was just arrogant. However, it's becoming clear he's genuinely intellectually disabled. Leave him alone. His channel gives him a sense of self-worth. Let him have it. Thank you, Chris, for your comment. Take it away, JM. Hello, my friends. My name is Joshua Michael. Wait, aren't you supposed to be wearing a lab coat in this video? Oh, there you are. And now introducing a man in a lab coat who is outstanding in his field. Joshua Michael himself, JM Truth. Hello, my friends. My name is Joshua Michael and I'd like to welcome you to jmtruth.com. This is the Science 100 series. This class is Science 103 on gas pressure. And I've subtitled this class, Where Did the Universe Go? Because by the end of the class, I'm going to reveal to you that you don't live where you think you do. Silly, I know where I live. I live on planet Earth. So let's get started. First, we are told by, sci by mainstream science that we live on a, a globe, that, th that there's an atmosphere, and on just beyond that atmosphere, there's a vacuum of space and stars and the sun and all of this all this stuff. So with the yes, and there's plenty of evidence to back it up. So here's the question: How do you have a gas pressure, also known as atmospheric pressure, without a container to begin with? Uh, gravity. Without the walls of a container, there can be no pressure. And explain how our ears pressurize when we're flying in airplanes or driving over the mountains. This is pretty cut and dry, folks. I mean. I mean, I can't make this any easier. I don't know how else to, to explain this. But I just told you what it was. Are you not paying attention? Next page. Hey, pick that up. This is from schooltutoring.com. It's a website for uh, special ed children or children with special needs. Um, so let's look at that. This is on gas. It has no shape or size of its own. It takes the shape of its container and occupies the space given to it. And that's from schooltutoring.com. Aw, you're making it so flat earth and globe deniers can understand. How sweet. I don't know. It's probably just a coincidence. In fact, the word container probably isn't even all that important. Uh, we probably can just throw it out, right? We never throw out containers. They are reusable and recyclable. Come on, JM Truth. So people are yelling, gas pressure gradient, gas pressure gradient, okay? Gas pressure gradient, gas pressure gradient. So let's see here. Answer this question. What comes first, gas pressure or gas pressure gradient? First. Seriously, JM Truth, you throw throwing another paper on the ground? Have some respect for Mother Earth. Pick it up. But before we talk about gradients, define gas pressure, okay? Hmm, let's see, let's see. Gas pressure. Ah, here it is. 
Pressure is a force exerted by the substance per unit area on another substance. The pressure of gas is the force that the gas exerts on the walls of its container. Now, why don't we look up atmospheric pressure while we're at it. That is, that pressure is called atmospheric pressure or air pressure. It is the force exerted on a surface by the air above it as gravity pulls it to Earth. Hmm, two different meanings to me. Here's the million dollar question, folks. How do we have a gas pressure, also known as atmospheric pressure here on Earth, if in fact we're on a spinning ball? Stop. In the name of love. Sorry, sorry, I had to. Uh, he doesn't get it. It's called gravity. That's okay. I never said you'd like it. I simply said it would be the truth. In other cultures, Dude, seriously, three times now, what the hell? In other cosmologies around the world, we are told that Earth is flat and appears to have a dome over it, such as Egyptian, Norse, Hindu, Inca, Navajo, and even Hebrew, okay? Not to mention that in scripture, we are told over 150 times what the cosmology of this Earth is. In fact, in Job, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Enoch, uh, the list goes on and on, folks. Great. Ancient cosmologies with cartoon drawings of a flat earth and the Holy Bible as your evidence of a flat earth? Come on, dude. We weren't born yesterday. They have tested these things without any proof. We've been shown CGI, computer graphics. We've been shown um, very bad cartoons, maps, or not maps, but drawings, paintings, and other things, but never an actual, any actual proof. Is that any way to talk about your fellow flat earthers and globe deniers, JM Truth? In fact, now that I think about it, the sun, we're told, is a big gaseous ball burning in, in space in a vacuum. By the way, since we're on the subject of vacuum, fire, the element by which the sun exerts its energy and i don't care if it's nuclear fission or what it's still fire okay needs what element folks in order to continue to burn oxygen but wait there's no oxygen in space the sun works by nuclear fusion not nuclear fission jm nuclear fusion is a nuclear reaction in which atomic nuclei of low atomic number fuse to form a heavier nucleus with the release of energy. Basically, atoms are smashed together, making other atoms, causing energy to be released. It is not fire. It does not need oxygen. You are an effing idiot. Ding! And we've already dispelled gravity. So here's my hypothesis which technically is all it can be because there's no way NASA or anyone else has ever studied the sun because there's no way to get close enough to it, okay? Actually, JM Truth, you are wrong. The Parker Solar Probe was launched on August 12th, 2018, over 340 days ago. It will swoop within 4 million miles of the sun's surface. It was launched to provide new data on solar activity to make critical contributions to our ability to forecast major space weather events that impact life on Earth. This is according to parkersolarprobe.jhuapl.edu. So all the pseudoscience that we've been taught, folks, is a lie and is not true. You're right. The science of flat earthers and globe deniers is pseudoscience. Now, I'm sorry if you're, a, if you're a teacher or a professor or even an astrophysicist and you've been teaching this garbage. Unfortunately, this is what happens when you teach in a system that has a curriculum that you can't verify. It's called indoctrination. Anyway, the, the only indoctrination going on is the indoctrination of flat earthers and globe deniers because they watch videos and listen to people like you and Eric Dubé. Thank you for being here with me on jmtruth.com. I hope you've enjoyed this class. I know I've enjoyed sharing it with you. And I hope we can move forward into really discovering truth and what our world and what our, 
this place that we live on called Earth really is. Because I think that there's more here than meets the eye, folks. That having been said, that ends my class for today. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, I was wondering, do you think maybe we can uh, try to figure out what the sun really is, seeing as how now we know it's not a ball of gas? You threw four papers. Didn't pick up one. I'd hate to see what your house looks like, JM Truth. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.